Hello, I'm back. Time for another one. Wait, I didn't mean to click that. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> that was awkward. Yeah. Nules. Yeah, hold on. This is the beginning again. System. Go to load. And then this. Pretty a little bit. So this is where all of you were. I was sure you had just left to go to the beach. Shana Chan, carrying a basket, was surprised to find us all gathered in front of the portrait. Ah, Shan. Well this is the first time Battle has seen Beatrice's portrait. He was just fascinated by it. Beatrice's possession. Oh, that's right, it certainly is fascinating. Beatrice Sama is truly beautiful. I am sure that she captivated the master. Sama. Gurt, <laughs> uh, In addition to the patron theory, there's also a theory that she was grandfather's first wife. Either way, although it's been a several decades since he met her, even now she holds a special place in his heart, which must mean that he's still captivated by her. Sheesh. That must have made Grandfather pretty jealous, huh? I'm not really sure, but that might actually be true. Apparently, Grandmother believed he was cheating on her with some blonde. Ooh, good smell! Good smell coming from Shannon! Maria, sniffing, approached the basket Shannon Chan was holding with interest. After hearing that, I noticed a fragrant scent with a touch of vanilla. I, I apologize. I was told by Kumasawa's hand to bring them to everyone. What is it, I wonder? Ooh, excellent. The cookies! <laughs> what are you cookies? What are you cookies? Oh! Please, eat as much as you would like. But, mm, would it be appropriate to serve cookies in a place like this in front of the portrait? Shen and Chan sent us a glance that seemed to ask us what we wanted to do about it. Well, yeah, I guess eating here would be a bad manners, generally. Wait, would be bad manners, generally speaking. Uh, Maria, why don't we eat someplace else? Let's put the cookies in a bento and have a picnic. Uh, have a picnic, have a picnic! We can get cookies, let's go! Yeah, let's go get some fresh air. We shouldn't stuff ourselves right in front of the witch. That's right, didn't we say that we wanted to go down to the beach in the first place? Let's go, let's go. Shan and Chan, sorry, but could I ask you to get us a blanket to sit on and some flasks of tea? Right, certainly. Shan Chan received her instructions and gracefully bowed before retracing her steps. We headed for the beach on our own. Everyone headed for the entrance in a group. Feeling as though that witch was staring down at our backs, I turned around once more. Ooh. Battler, you still don't believe? Nope, I believe. It'd be so much cooler that way. The golden witch Beatrice gave Grandfather ten tons of gold. And that gold might be sleeping around here somewhere. Besides, didn't Grandfather write that strange epitaph that's so challenging us to find if we can? Yeah, find it. Yeah. I'd say that kind of adventurous story is way better. Twenty billion yen worth of gold, huh? <laughs> Even if we split up between the four of us, that's still a ridiculous amount of money. Yeah, five billion men hidden. <laughs> <laughs> five billion yen for each of us. <laughs> Incredible. With that kind of money, you can probably make any sort of business prosper. In fact, we could live our whole lives fabulously without working at all. <laughs> I don't want five million yen. Oh, cookies, cookies! Wahahaha! <laughs> Maria would take cookies over money. Still, five million yen. That's like a dream. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> no homo. Oh. Ridiculous. Is it possible that you all truly believe in Father's legend of the gold? Of course, we don't believe in a story about which giving them gold. But there's no mistake about the gold itself. The fact that Father obtained gold bars from an unknown source has been confirmed in several ways. We've heard that, before the president of the Marusso company died, Father showed him a large pile of gold somewhere. 
Father Goose that man's claim as proof that there were ten tons worth. Hmm. That's just the nonsense of a senile old man. Along with Father, he was just fabricating a story. You can't take it seriously. If that goal didn't exist, he wouldn't have been able to gather able to gather so much funding. Before the president died, he was a person with such a sincere personality that he earned the respect of many in the business world. He wouldn't have become partner to such fraud. Aniki, the president of Maruso, definitely saw it. Ten tons of it, clearly with his own eyes. Even more, Dad let the president take one ingot at random and have it examined. The results of the examination showed that the 10 kilogram ingot was 99.99% pure. He said that the Shiramaya family crest, the one-winged eagle, wasn't printed on it. Almost instantly, the Shiramaya rejected the gold spread amongst the fixers of the business world. I'm stuttering on. The gold from an unknown foundry had a poor rate of conversion into money. Thinking that it was a chance for decisive profits, they accepted it as collateral, and as a result, Father was able to receive massive loans. Is there no limit to the absurdity you are willing to accept? How old are you people? Are you still taking that nursery tale you heard as children seriously? What is the proof? Wait, where is the proof that this ten tons of gold even exists? Aren't you just parroting the lies of Father and few those close to him? Of course, it's just a story, but still, Aniki. The amount of money your dad raised required a suitable amount of collateral. Even if the gold itself was just a rumor, it's an undoubtable fact that he showed them a treasure of comparable worth. It was just an illusion of money created by our penniless father. He acted as though he actually had gold that didn't exist, fooling his sponsors. It was probably the gamble of a lifetime. Luckily, his use of those funds proved successful. If the Korean War demands hadn't come and the Shiramaya family had not been restored, father would probably have been hunted, hounded after as the clerk of the century. So, are you saying the gold never existed and father made it all up? Of course. And because of that, the illusion of gold became a mere inconvenience once he achieved enough success. That's why later on, father added all of that about the witch and black magic, weakening the credibility of the entire story. I can't really get that out. voice I'm looking for of this man. In other words, he revealed that the illusion of the gold was a fabrication. If he claimed to have received the gold from a witch, no one will believe that it existed at all, right? Voice acting is hard. A lot of variety with your vocal cords. <laughs> it's also possible he said it for all of your sakes. Nevertheless, here comes some stupid offspring wanting to divide up this non-existent gold along with the rest of the inheritance. Rosa, don't tell me that even you believe in a fabrication like this. I can't prove whether or not Father really had the gold. I just want to claim my rightful share as one of our father, as one of father's four children. Oh, it seems even you have started to talk that way, Rosa. I see, so that's what you're going on, all getting at. You're trying to claim that I'm attempting to keep all the gold for myself. Please, then, you've gathered a massive supply of funds. That's a fact. If we rule out the possibility that you've been embezzling father's personal funds, then there's only one possibility left, right? Niki, we've been thinking that you might have found those ten tons gold of gold bars. <laughs> ten tons of gold bars. <sighs> Ridiculous. Such a thing never existed in the first place. Then explain yourself. It was the embezzlement of father's assets or father's hidden gold. Huh. How could you have gathered so much funding if not by one of those methods? Wait, these methods. Doesn't matter, but I don't want to say the word that's there. <laughs> These methods. Even I have many friends in the political and financial realms. I have earned their cooperation, nothing more. And on that matter, I have no responsibility to explain myself to you. You understand, don't you? There are some topics that ought not to be spoken of. Ought not to be spoken of. Do not stutter, kind of horror. Do not to prevent that happening. If you insist on that point, that's all well and good for now. But Aniki, that doesn't have long. Nobody can ensure that it will live to see this day next year. The inheritance process will begin at the instant of Dad's death. We'll arrange for lawyers and accountants who are impartial to all of us and have then inspect Dad's financial situation. At that time, if it comes to light that you've unjustly interfered with Father's money, you understand, right? I don't have a clue what you're talking about. 
You're starting to make me feel as indignant as my wife has. Of course, father's goal was part of father's fortune. We understand it's money you can't come deal openly, but the four siblings should have an equal right to it. In other words, we're going to have your financial situation investigated as well as gas to determine whether you're hoarding your gold or not. Well, isn't this a great opportunity? Right now, prove the existence of your so-called support from friends and acquaintances. That way we can supportively apologize for foolishly doubting you. Right, Rosa? That's right. Cross me, Sam. You are the one who's dodging the issue. If you were guiltless, you could just prove that you were in the right, but you aren't even trying to do so. However, Aniki, we still have to consider your position here. As Dad's representative, wait, who's talking? <laughs> you are probably hearing a larger, wait, bearing a larger share of the burden than we are. We've been living terribly relaxed lives until now, so it wouldn't be fair for the rest of us to complain without taking your efforts into account. <laughs> it seems you cannot make up your mind whether to flatter or slander me. Please get to the point. Basically, randomly investigating nitpicky aspects of, aspects of father's wealth seems like a pretty crude way to go about it. As you said, Krasnison, there may have been movements of money that are difficult to explain. We've come to consult with you today, today while fully aware of that point. Both sides stand to gain from talking about this now. A consultation? Oh. When the inheritance is divided, you'll be rewarded for, for your years of hard work taking care of Dad by agreement that's generous in your favor. So I have him, but I'm still trying to figure out voices for the others. Huh. Don't misunderstand us, he said. We aren't saying that we'll abandon our rights, but when we make our claim for what we deserve, we might as well offer a generous understanding for your position. That's what we mean. In other words, if you accept our conditions, then when the inheritance is divided, we'll leave the investigation of father's financial situation to you, Cross Nisi. All the siblings from Eva downwards suspected that Cross was trying to steal their father's wealth. So letting Cross report the state of that wealth was an extremely contradictory and huge concession. If, as they claimed, if Cross was actually embezzling money, Cross would be able to hide that fact. Besides which, it would be possible for him to control the distribution of the inheritance in a manner favorable for to himself. Cross, realizing that this sounded too good to be true, couldn't help but feel suspicious. He couldn't help but worry about what they asked for in exchange. This is why voice acting usually has different people voicing other characters. You don't want them all to sound the same. Uh, <laughs> after mistrusting me completely, you can say that you are willing to restore your confidence in me as the eldest sibling. So, what is it you want in return? The people who can make themselves sound like different people that they are are really talented. <laughs> Man, just what we deserve as siblings. You aren't the kind of person to steal dad's property. But you also aren't financed by some patron. Considering all that, there's a certain explanation there that would satisfy the rest of us. Desan, you found ten tons of gold and used that as collateral to gather some funding. Yes, just like Father did in the past, right? If that's the case, oh. <laughs> if that's the case, there won't be any funny business in Father's finances. You've always been a good son looking after Father. Why we mistrust a person like that? You're being so roundabout, I can barely understand you. Please speak in clearer and more practical terms. I think he'd be kind of like the dad, but a little more... Uh, what's the word? I don't know. <laughs> Our first condition. Aniki, you must admit that you found dad's gold. Are you asking me to admit I possess gold that doesn't exist? Our second condition. You acknowledge that each sibling has a right to share of the gold and you will pay out those shares. How foolish. With that non-existent 20 billion yen of gold, that would be 5 billion yen per person. Are you telling me to pay a total of 15 billion yen? Yeah, like an aggressive voice. But not as deep as his. Ridiculous. Keep listening till the end. We know that much money can't just pop out of nowhere. We're not asking you to make an impossible deal. Of course, regarding the potions, portions of the gold. <laughs> Oops. Uh, we plan to reward your pawn you plenty of you for your hard work until now. <laughs> Our third condition, the portion of the gold to the one bearing the title of successor to the Mishir Maya family will be fifty percent. The remainder will be considered a fair share of the siblings and divided them. Of course, this also includes you, Cross Mason. That was her talking. Yeah. <sighs> of the twenty billion, it's one twelve point five billion will go to Aniki. 
2.5 billion will go to Ethan Easton. 2.5 billion will go to me, and 2.5 will go to Rosen. That division scheme makes me so grateful I could cry. So you are saying, for the sake of the gold that doesn't exist, I must pay you 7.5 billion yen. What's wrong? Nissan, your share is five times the size of ours. These are such good terms, I'd be jumping for joy. <laughs> Alright then. Our fourth condition. The gold will be liquidated and distributed along with the inheritance at the time of father's death. You're not on screen. Is it still you talking? However, as the deposit, 10 of our portion, 10% of our portions are to be paid to us promptly. I think it is. These payments must be made before March of next year. What do you think, Krasnys? This is an ideal chance for you to restore the trust regarding your handling of father's assets, isn't it? Of course, it might be impossible to get a full 7.5 billion before father dies, but it should be possible for you to make a deposit, a deposit of 750 million, right? 750 million? What the? Okay, paying 700 million in half a year might sound like a pain, but you should be able to manage it. What with all your friends in the political and business spheres? Normally, we'd have to receive the 7.5 billion right now, all at once. Mm. But out of concern for you, we'll show our sincerity by asking for only 10% of that for the time being. The remaining 90% can wait until inheritance is distributed. It's distributed. Mm. See? Even you'd be capable of managing a mere 10% to show your sincerity. So, you're saying that. <laughs> I'm trying to think of something. So you're trying to sell me the right to assess father's financial situation for me. 750 million yen? Heh. <laughs> How impressive. You all certainly have grown. To think that I'm now the one being offered deals. Nissan, if you accept these terms, the rest of us siblings will leave the investigation of father's assets to you. However, the results of that investigation will be subject to scrutiny. It's only natural, right? We'd be so sad if you managed things so that our 7.5 billion share shrink. We'll avoid complaining as a general rule. Just make sure you do it neat and tidy. As long as you don't try anything that's blatantly obvious, we've got no intention of stirring things up. We want our inheritance quickly, too. We don't want it to get all drawn out and left hand. If a complaint is made, who would carry out the follow-up investigation? We don't mind if it's you. This is probably the first and last chance for our siblings to reach a consensus. I believe it won't come to that. <laughs> uh, looks like even you can speak up now and then, Rosa. By this time, it's obvious that Cross wasn't at all trusted as the oldest sibling, so there's no need to go into detail. The formerly tyrannical oldest brother had always abused his privileges and violated the other siblings' shares. It was in response to this that the other three, now adults, were finally teaming up and striking back for the first time. Sorry, but there's more. Our fifth condition. This decision must take precedence over father's will. Later on, we don't want Sun Will to appear and make this decision completely irrelevant. I see that you're very cautious. Then, let me ask, if the gold really were found, what would you do? Since you'll be making payments to us for what the gold's worth, the rest of us really don't care if we ever see the gold or not. You can think of our share as an advance payment. Ooh. <laughs> it's good to have dreams, isn't it? You plan to turn this island into a shore, right? You might stumble upon the gold by chance during construction. You'll let out a high-pitched laugh. Cross lost but didn't even flinch. Let me add a seventh condition before I accept. In the situation that any other than myself finds the gold, they will immediately turn it over to me. Yes, yes, of course. We'll hold on to it for you. Hehe. <laughs> it was a play on words. Of course, the others, who were forcing crops to pay money for some non-existent gold. It's the gift of fortune if they've actually found it. Huh. They actually found it. From the beginning, this deal has been nothing more than a threat directed at Crocs. This is fun. Ah, regardless of the actual facts, it was still extremely likely that Cross was embezzling his father's assets. When Kinzo faced death at last and had his inheritance distributed, some unpleasant facts would surely come to light. That could easily become fatal to Cross. 
The others had spotted his weak point and were threatening their brother under the veil of compromise, trying to wring a huge sum of money out of him. However, they had forgotten one thing. They had forgotten that their brother's brain moved so swiftly, at least when it came to cunning and gallon, that they'd been forced to band together to combat him. Well, Eva. Hmm. Yeah, I couldn't stop smiling, just a lot of reading in a row. I kind of exhaust my mouth. While Eva couldn't stop smiling, sure of her victory. Huh. Cross let out a gloating laugh to show how relaxed he was. Ha ha ha! This all makes for such a touching story. My estrangement from all of you has left a deep pain in my heart. If accepting these conditions means that siblings can become friends again, it would please me to no end. I'd be happy to agree to your deal. Rejoice, Rosa. We have reached an understanding. Oh. Rosa's expression dim. It was never a good sign when her brother started talking like this. Eva also keenly picked up on this. That's why she was unable to wipe away a sense of unease, even though Krauss had obediently accepted the deal. Why, how obedient of you. It's not like you at all, Anisi. What a cruel thing to say. Are you implying that I, I have... Are you implying that I have some ulterior motive? Of course I'm not. I'm just the same as all of you. Just the same as all of you. He seemed to emphasize just that one part. The color of Rudolph's face darkened. To him, it sounded as though Cross was saying, I have a plan similar to yours. So Rudolph panicked. He rushed to bring this nearly resolved discussion to a conclusion. Then we're good. So, Niki, would you mind standing when I'm signing here? This is a written contract summarizing the discussion we've just been having. There's one for each of us. Everyone will sign for the same contents. Rudolph took four written contracts out of his breast pocket that had the details of their deal written on them. The seven condition you proposed will, of course, be added right now. Don't worry about it. He's like an upbeat, a little bit, like friendly dad voice, kind of. <laughs> Oniki, need a pen? Rudolph took a fountain pen out of his breast pocket and then offered it to Krauss. Krauss made as if to accept it. But then, with a small laugh, he drew back his hand without taking it and spoke. Actually, in order to ensure that this agreement is properly executed, I'd like to propose an amendment on just one point. As soon as Krauss said that single sentence, all the siblings felt as though something ominous was creeping up on their backs at the same time. That won't do. We've already decided, haven't we? Just stay quiet and sign it. Why are you in such a hurry, Eva? Of course I'm sorry. I promise to share of the gold going all to all of you will be 7.5 billion yen. I also promise that when father's inheritance is distributed, I will quickly and neatly look at it. However, there is one point that I simply must insist that you compromise on. Insist. <laughs> I said insist or something. <laughs> what are you talking about? What don't you like? The part about promptly paying 10% of your share, 750 million yen. As you pointed out, my financial situation is far from prosperous. While well, I can guarantee that I collect on various future investments. Huh. I must admit that I am quite poor at the present moment. Best relax, me. <laughs> In short, I have absolutely no money that I can move around right now. I am incompetent, and my business sense is dull. Since I am the loser you all claim me to be, I don't have the power to move 750 million yen in just half a year. Half of a year. Yeah. You see that? That, that can't be true. Are you trying to deceive us with such a half baked trick? At the time of the division of the inheritance, I will liquidate everything at once. Remove the condition that I must pay you 10% in advance. That is the only condition under which I am willing to sign. Russ needs in. That 10% is nothing more than a number to measure your sincerity, isn't it? All things being equal, you shouldn't have any room to negotiate at all. We're doing you a huge favor by offering to let things slide for just 10% in good faith on you. Now that we've explained that, you rejecting our offer would seriously damage our trust and relationship, right? Hideyoshi had a humble expression on his face and was rubbing his hands together, but his eyes were calm at all. 
I can narrate well, but I'm still trying to figure out how I should talk for some of these characters. <laughs> Kraus had already seen through to the shadow in the depths of those eyes. <laughs> Why are you all in such a rush? It feels weird in my throat when I try to make it sound different. Or could it be that you're afraid of something? Rosa, won't you tell me alone? Secretly to the rest of the siblings. Wait, secretly so the rest of the siblings can't hear. But it's not as though I... Quit it, Nikki. All we're asking is whether we're going to sign. We're going to sign or not. Just forget about making any strange deals or any other suspicious moves. Oh, you say I have no room to negotiate? Are you trying to claim that I am in a weak position, which therefore puts us in an unweak, unequal relationship? Servers began to crawl up the old staff. He began to feel himself getting overwhelmed by the height of his brother's completely insurmountable wall and the long shadow that had existed since they were children. Shouldn't deals be made between those on even footings? From my perspective, this deal will help restore the long lost trust in my younger siblings and deepen the love between us. It's an old problem that's been eating at me, and one I would prefer to resolve as soon as possible. I would be overjoyed if we could resolve it today. However, it seems I'm not the one who would be quite glad to close this deal quickly. Am I wrong? Crouch stared at each of the siblings. His siblings. They avoided his gaze with animal-like instinct. Only Hideyoshi was slow in avoiding it, so he was caught by Crouch's gaze. Hideyoshi Nisan! I hear your company has been doing extremely well lately. At a brisk pace, it went public, and both its track record and its stock prices have soared. I am truly jealous. We aren't here to talk about my husband. However, it is unfortunate that you have neglected your stockholders. It's even more unfortunate that you were unable, unable to solidify your base when you became stockholders. Before you realized it, some bad-natured colleagues of yours have brought up a huge share of your company's stock there. Right? But how could you know about that? Oh, I just I forgot his voice. <laughs> the same way you knew about me. But it's possible to collect evidence proving that no one would offer a loan to me, and it's possible for me to collect evidence on you. <laughs> Is it really so unexpected? Wait, unexpected? As that? Unexpected. <laughs> we just skipped right over a couple letters. <laughs> Cross screen brother. In contrast, Hideyoshi's face was rapidly turning pale. Hideyoshi's company was a restaurant chain management company that he started from nothing. Thanks to Hideyoshi's management efforts, the company had achieved success repeatedly, expanding its range, and a petition to make it a stock listed company had recently succeeded. The greatest advantage of being in the stockholding system is that you can sell stock certificates and gain a large amount of finance. That amount tends to be far greater than the business's normal profits. So, this is an extremely effective way to gather massive funds to expand a business even further. However, in exchange for financing the company, the stockholders gain certain rights. They're given rights that allow them to observe and guide the company they've invested in, leading to profits even greater than their original investments. This right is guaranteed to the stockholders, and they sometimes use it to dismiss, to dismiss uh, ineffectual management. The right allows them to keep an eye on management and prevent the money they've invested in the company from going to waste. However, if they use it forcibly, they can eject the former management and take over the company. After all, dismissing management and nominating new management are powers held by the general body of all shareholders. That power is determined by the majority decision of the stockholders, and people who hold more stock get to cast more votes. In other words, if some person in the group holds a majority of the stock, they can freely chase out the old management and make the president anyone they'd like. If they want, it's also possible for them to make themselves president. Most companies take various defensive ventures to stop malicious people from buying up their stock and threatening their position, like ensuring that lots of stock is bought by those close to them, such as company employees. However, Hideyoshi's company had only recently become stock-listed, and he hadn't had time to strengthen those defensive measures. Or, maybe Hideyoshi was so engrossed in the management of his company that he couldn't properly understand the dangers of being stock-listed. It's hard to say whether he should be viewed as a kind-hearted manager immersed in the work of management, or a foolish manager who had his feet swept out from under him. 
In other words, there existed some people who wouldn't let him get away with that naivety unscathed. Wait, naivety, I guess. Naive. I know it's pronounced naive if you say naivety. I think it's naivety. They began repeatedly buying up stock in Hideyoshi's company, rapidly gaining such strength that they couldn't be ignored. Yeah, I don't know, it just could be guess. They then sent anonymous documents to their shareholders in an attempt to gain control of the majority. It looks have gotten a little dry. Huh. Documents mean bread. The current management continues to make pointless investments and is ignoring the needs of the stockholders. But it's forced the current management to retire, cut the current wasted investments, and let this company be born again as one that gives more back to the stockholders. It's very difficult to make the actual state of the company's management known. The fruits of Hideyoshi's sleepless nights and constant concern for his company were really distorted, and he lost the trust of the stockholders. Thanks to these efforts, this group has all, had almost collected a majority of the company's stock. Oh, oh, did she? At that point, uh, even Hideyoshi noticed and started to buy back the stock, but the stockholders realized that the company was undergoing an acquisition maneuver. And each demanded a ridiculous price for the shares that Hideyoshi was trying to buy back. They continued to torture Hideyoshi, who had no leeway in the negotiation of the price. One of the certainties of capitalism is that the price will rise when two parties buy for the same thing. And one of the certainties of democracy is that the majority controls everything. So in the end, whoever, whoever manages to buy up the most stock wins. Put another way, whoever has the most money wins. Yeah. Unless Hideyoshi could obtain a large sum of money at this critical time, he could easily lose all he had built so far. Therefore, more than anything else, he wanted a lot of money right now. He couldn't wait for the division of Kinto's inheritance, since no one knew when he would die. And you, Rudolph. Uh, I've been in quite a lot of trouble lately, too, haven't you? You always hear people say it's terrifying overseas, but it seems it really is true. American trials are settled quite emotionally. They never hand out generous judgments to foreigners. Who are you advised? By your lawyer that making a settlement with the other party would be more economical in the long run. What's this all about? Well, it's just some trouble from work. No big deal. Nothing you can't settle with money. Kyrie immediately guessed the meaning behind the subtle discussion on Rudolph's face. Her husband had gotten wrapped up in some kind of trouble without her knowledge and had been worrying over it alone. That's right. In this world, anything could be settled with money. After all, they can even buy back the broken bonds between siblings. America is very fussy about the violation of rights. But with money, anything can be settled. Along with capitalism. Though, rumor has it that the settlement money could be as high as several million dollars. Rudolph had been building a large amount of wealth with a certain type of niche industry. However, a niche is a niche. It definitely wasn't a business exposed to the light of day. An American corporate giant was trying to accuse Rudolph's company of violating their rights. For various reasons, it was thought that victory for Rudolph in this trial would be extremely unlikely and he was being forced into an all out surrender. But even so, there was a way for this to be resolved with money. If he could pay that money, it might still be painful, but he'd be able to pick himself back up. But if he didn't pay, he would lose everything. Therefore, more than anything else, he wanted a lot of money right now! Didn't you just say that? <laughs> Jeez! Rosa, you're a good and noble little sister. You wouldn't get involved in a dangerous money game. However, your soft heart in nature has brought you trouble, hasn't it? Oh wait, I think that was like a hasn't it, like confidence, I have no clue, or like, in my opinion, becoming a cosigner for everything isn't something, anything isn't something one should enter into lightly. Uh, that's none of your business, Cross Nissan. Oh, she got mad? Uh, Rosa uncharacteristically laid bare her emotions and yelled, after all, no one was supposed to know that. As Krauss watched, he let slip a muffled lie. Without exception, every one of them, more than anything else, wanted a lot of money right now. In other words, the situation had been reversed. 
After all, the person the younger siblings were threatening was the only one who had no urgent need for a larger sum, like a large sum of money. The other three, no matter, however, wanted a lot of money quickly, no matter the cost. In other words, the longer it took to establish this deal, the better position, position Krauss would be. <sighs> Krauss was extremely sly. He had known of their Achilles' heel from the beginning. Even so, he had not been certain. Therefore, he had hidden his knowledge until the very end, striking back only after analyzing their attitudes. If it were possible, I would like nothing more to, than to raise some money for my adorable siblings in their time of need. But unfortunately, I have nothing in hand. If you know of any sponsors that might be able to raise a whole 750 million, I suggest you try there first. Cross's elated words were so obviously detached from what he actually felt. The other siblings could do nothing more than listen, grinding their teeth. If they could think of a sponsor that convenient, they wouldn't have kept us in this. They wouldn't have kept us. This, eh, they wouldn't have kept up the charade. Eh, wouldn't have kept up the charade. They had entered this huge battle specifically because they had exhausted all of their options. However, if you do insist on relying on your big brother, I wouldn't mind using my influence to help you find such a sponsor. Oh wait, I do believe you said that I have no influence. Well then, I'm afraid I wouldn't be much help to you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Tails. Krauss's low-quoting laugh began to fill the car with the younger siblings who had been driving the oldest brother into a corner until a moment ago could do nothing more than grimace and grind their teeth. Eva, don't make me laugh, as if I better put myself near death. Don't make me laugh. Don't make me laugh. What's with a dot 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 and an exclamation point? What am I supposed to do for that? Uh, if we relied on you, how exactly would you help us? I told you, didn't I? All I can do is find other sponsors for you. Of course, I will negotiate for the highest interest rate possible. <laughs> mm. Ew. Taking advantage of us. Honey, please calm down. I am calm. I'm extremely cool. You... Jeez! Kai grabbed her husband's hand, but that action made him feel even more pitiful, so Rudolph shake shook it off. Krauss laughed as though watching something highly amusing. In times like these, it certainly would be nice to find Father's hidden goal. If you did, you could split it up into 2.5 million yen portions of it. How sad. How sad. How very sad. How extremely, totally, truly, hopelessly sad. Tonight, let us all drink together. As we solved the riddle of Beatrice at the time and discovered the location of Father's hidden goal. If we four friendly siblings work together, there's surely no puzzle we can solve. Ha 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 How can you laugh that much? This dude, what is he up to? <laughs> All I can say is, my guy. Quite an entertaining scheme. Well then, what are the conditions they've attached? Well, whether or not Crossing I actually discovers the goal. He'll pay Eva Sama, Rudolf Sama, and Rosa Sama, okay, Sama, not Sama. Eva Sama, a total of 7.5 billion yen for their shares. However, 10% of that will be paid before March. Ha 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 ha. dice. To think he would have his feet swept out from under him by his younger siblings. How true it is. Okay, if I try to do a deep voice for him, I'm going to hurt my throat. <laughs> but I'll go for it. <laughs> but it sounds as though they trip when going in for a kill, yes. Yes. 
crushed him exposed the fact that Ida-sama and, Yoga, Ida -sama and the younger siblings all have an urgent need to get money. Is there even any need to expose such obvious facts? That irresolute, incompetent man! What are they doing now? That conversation has been put on hold for the time being. Now, Beatrice Sama's uh, epitaph is being discussed. So, they're trying to solve the riddle and find out where my goal is hidden. Yes. Kinzo set down the spectacles and distorted. Will the miracle be fulfilled first, or will those fools expose the goal first? What show this will be. At the very moment those fools solve my puzzle, I will suffer other defeats. They can suck my corpse down to the last fragment of bone. The greedy fools can allow great magic to bring forth the miracle. And yet, if the fulfillment of the miracle comes first, if it comes first, Beatrice will surely wait. Beatrice will be resurrected again. The smile I've been tasting half my life will be restored. Oh, Beatrice! Soon will come the sacred night when we shall bet upon a miracle and the game of demons shall begin. I will surely prove triumphant and survive. I'll let you have the lives of all those others. I don't need wealth or honor or assets or gold or anything. All I want is to see your smile one last time. <laughs> oh, jeez, sick boy. Kinzo choked, apparently in great pain. Tanon got closer and tried to pat his master's back, but Kinzo motioned for him to stop. Do you know why I went to the trouble of exposing the hidden location of the gold in a place that everyone can see? No. It is because magical power is determined by risk. If the number of people who try to discover Beatrice's gold is great, and the danger of them succeeding is great as well, then the power of magic will bring about a grand miracle which will succeed despite the odds. In other words, magic is a game. It is not the case that the one performs the best that becomes the victor. Victor. Becomes the victor. <sighs> the victor performs the best because he has been given grants of magic. Do you see? It is similar to how the miracle of life can be granted only after winning against the divine odds of several hundred million to one. Is this a little difficult for you? Your text fills up the entire page right now. Oh my goodness. My apologies. That's fine. It all comes down to this. I will give all that I have built up to the ones and solve the mystery of being Beatrice's epitaph. Wealth, honor, gold, and the inheritance of the sheer Maya family. Everything that I have established. My children certainly aren't the only ones with the right to attempt to solve this riddle. Anyone who solves the riddle will have the right to gain everything, even you. Yes. However, I couldn't possibly understand such a difficult riddle. Of course, I made it difficult, but you must try to solve it as well. That will form the seed that summons the miracle in my magic. If everyone attempts it and everyone fails, that will be that. However, if the miracles come together and give birth to magical power, it will happen. Beatrice will revive. That is why you must attempt it too. Everyone must attempt it. And in so doing, it will give strength to my magic. Okay? Do you understand? Yes. I will try. For a long while, Kinzo repeated the mutter to himself, agitated and clutching at his head. Tanon stayed where he was, alert and unmoving, until he was given a nice order from his master. Kinzo eventually realized this. Very well, leave me. There's a bag of sweets on the liquor cabinet. You can take some with you as a reward. I'm fine. After all, I am furnished. Boy. This is just tricky. Mm. So furniture doesn't need sweets? Well, I suppose it stands to reason. In that case, we me. Yes. Excuse me. Cannot bow and want to study. As the door closed, a heavy walking noise sounded out.
But it was not the sound of Tanner walking in the door. It was the door locking automatically. No one could enter without Kinzo's permission, and once they left, they could not enter again. It was a mechanism, mechanism that Kinzo was unable to trust his blood relatives, and had created to seal himself up in his own study and isolate himself from the outside world. He was already unable to trust anyone except him. Not the children who shared his blood, but those servants who called themselves parents. This could be very dark a lot of the time. Huh. Oh man. Not just Sam, how are you feeling? Ah, thank you, Sam. Oh, it's just that there's no place for me to be anymore. With a bitter laugh, Nanjo turned to face the door to the parlor. That look was apparently enough to tell Genji what Nanjo wanted to say. For the most part, Genji also understood the family situation. It must have made him even want to frown, knowing that right now in the lounge, the master who served was being discussed so disrespectfully. But it would have been very difficult. But it would have been very difficult to gather that from some different expression. Still, I don't understand. Why did Kinzo sound have something so provocative or Nanja looked at the portrait of interest. No, he actually directed his gaze beneath the portrait at the plate of the epitaph. I do not presume to understand the master's thoughts. However, I'm sure he had a deep reason for doing so. Since long ago, when Kinzo Sam played chess, he would always prepare his moves according to some far reaching judgment. Yes, sometimes even to make moves I couldn't understand. For an average person like me, it was impossible to see through to whatever it was he was playing. Sometimes I wonder if this might be some kind of will within the master's eyes. Perhaps he wishes to hand over his wealth and tie him to the one who can understand it. So, you're thinking he may have wanted the four servants to work together and solve the riddle. He forced him outside of and still solved it. Kinzo's hand may speak of his children in insulting terms, but perhaps he also wants them to repair their relationship. Certainly, would be heartwarming if, as an angel had suggested, this epitaph had been made to repair the siblings' relationship. However, both Nanjo and Genji knew that nothing could be more impossible than this. They'd known Kinzo longer than anyone, and Kinzo trusted them more than his own relatives. But even they could not guess at his true motives. The master always says that everyone has the right to try and solve the riddle, even if they aren't a member of his family. What about you, Dr. Nanjo? No, no, it's a little too difficult, a puzzle for the senile old man. Actually, I once wrote this epitaph down in my notebook. Um, <laughs> night after night, I would try to solve it before going to sleep. But, <laughs> it really is hard. It looks like we might have some free time to relax and consider it before someone comes to get us. What do you say, Genji Sam? I am nothing more than furniture and service to the master. Gold masses are unnecessary. My, you are very modest. I imagine that's why Kinzo Sam trusts you so much. Press. If so, I am honored. As Nandro lightly laughed in response, he once again looked at the appetite. Behold the sweet fish river running through my beloved hometown. You who seek the golden moon can follow its path downstream in search of the key. The epitaph on the portrait called my beloved witch Beatrice goes as follows. Behold the sweet fish river, river running through my beloved mountain. You who seek the golden land, follow this path downstream in search of the key. As you travel down it, you will see a village. In that village, look for the shore of the two of you, the two of you tell you of. There sleeps the key to the golden land. The one who obtains the key must then travel to the golden land in accordance with these rules. On the first twilight, offer the six chosen by the key of sac as sacrifices. On the second twilight, those who remain shall tear apart the two who are close. On the third twilight, those who remain shall pierce my noble name. On the fourth twilight, gouge the head and kill. On the fifth twilight, gouge the chest and kill. On the sixth twilight, gouge the stomach and kill. On the seventh twilight, gouge the knee and kill. On the eighth twilight, gouge the leg and kill. On the ninth twilight, the witch shall revive, and thou shalt be left alive. That's a lot of gouging. On the tenth twilight, at the journey's end, you shall attain to the power of the golden land's treasures once and for the last time. The 
which shall praise the wise and bestow forth treasures. One shall be all the gold from the golden land. One shall be the resurrection of the dead, all the dead souls. One shall be the resurrection of the love that was lost. One shall be to put the witch to sleep for all the time. Sleep peacefully, my lover, my beloved witch be with you. Be a Ted Twilight, your journey ends, and you reach the Golden Land. You really are diligent, Maria. You did a good job writing all this all down. Oh, I forgot a lot, so I always write things down. Mom oh, told me to. There was a notebook inside the handbag Maria was always carrying around, and Beatrice Epitaph was copied onto it. Thanks to that, we were all able to challenge the puzzle of the Epitaph while walking down this beach. Jessica and the rest had already tried to solve it several times, and had already gotten bored with it. However, since this was a first for me, I was so excited that I couldn't stop. It really tickled my sense of adventure. Let's start with the first one. Behold the sweet fish river running through my beloved hometown. Where was Grandfather's hometown again? I heard that before the war. The Ushirimaya family had a mansion here up at the water. Ottawa, which makes you want to know which Sweetfish River falls, flows through Ottawa, right? Yeah, because that river will be the starting place. Anyone searching for the Golden Land would head down that and search for a key. What's this river in Ottawa? Does it have Sweetfish swimming in it? If you're looking for Sweetfish in Ottawa, it'd have to be Hayakawa. It's a famous, wait, it's famous for its mountain street fishing. <laughs> I hate fish! <laughs> Maria, you'll understand when you get a bit older. Look, 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 salty roasted sweet fish. <laughs> Yummy. Even though we just ate, I'm getting hungry again. Okay. You do be teasing. Um, shall I bring you a biscuit? Huh? Oh, sorry, that's not what I meant. Don't mind it. Chan Chan was faithfully keeping us company since she didn't have any afternoon chores for a while. I would have thought that since she's a servant, accompanying us would force her to take care of us and tire her out, but that didn't seem to be the case for her. On the contrary, she seemed to enjoy joining in on a conversation with people close to her age. When I asked, I heard that she was the supportive worker whose room and board were supplied by her employer. So normally, the only person close to her in age was Jessica. Yeah, I can imagine how that might be pretty dull. Okay. I hear wind in the background. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, so I get that the sweetfish-filled river near the water is high hollow. In that case, we've got to go down it. Do you find anything if you head down high hollow river? Um, if you follow it downstream, you'll arrive at the ocean. Of course, you reach the mouth of the river. And the third line of the epitaph was, as you travel down, it, you will see a village. Is this still her? By the way, since long ago, the mouths of rivers have been key points in transportation, in transportation, and large cities tend to be built there. That'd be the next checkpoint. Or what I might have been I don't know. <laughs> uh, hmm. That's a pretty good theory. Just like you guessed, there's an old city that, that was very prosperous in like ancient times. That's where Odawara Castle is. Hmm. Ah, I think I might have gone to Odawara Castle on a field trip once. It really was a wonderful castle. Yeah, I also went there. Even though I live in a western style house, it's true that Japanese people feel calmer with a Japanese land. Ooh, castles are more. Deep parts are better. <laughs> I see.
Yesy, yesy. Okay. If we find the gold, the great power of Tama will generously serve a whole theme park for a day while you play in it. Still, Odawara Castle. Huh? The hidden gold of Odawara Castle. Oh, it's actually starting to sound pretty good. That's the spirit. <laughs> well, we figured out that much two years ago. The village down the river where the sweet fish swim in Odawara. We figured it was probably somewhere near Odawara Castle. The problem is the next line. Okay, let's see where Battle of Strange Reason can take him. Jessica grinned broadly. She seemed to be implying that she would have solved the puzzle long ago if it was that easy. Hey, I'll definitely find it and keep it all for myself. The fourth line. In that village, look for a shore that you will, you will tell you. I don't know what it means, but but anyway, the shore. What does it mean by the shore? No, wait. Is there any place near the sh there with shore or Kishi and his name? Um, I've heard there's a place called Sogus Kishi in Odawara. Huh? Wow, you sure know a lot about it. What could that mean? Shin, Shin, are you trying to solve the riddle and get the gold too? That makes us rivals. It's not like I'm interested in gold. It's just that George Sama told me about it before. That's because we reached the same conclusion. That's because, wait, sir. That's because we reached the same conclusion two years ago. We even went to the trouble of laying out a map and looking it up. It was about five kilometers to the north of Odawara. We definitely found a place called Sogus Kishi there. However, after that, we get stuck. The fifth line doesn't say where the key is hidden in that place. Maria Chan, could you read it for us? <sighs> there sleeps the key to the golden room. <sighs> I could read it! Good job! <laughs> so the key is probably large, and there was never any house built there by the Ashira and Maya family. Not much we can do to find a key in such a vast area without any hints. You're right. And without the key, we can't advance to the next line. George and Niki, what kind of place is Soka Kishi? Let's see. I've never been there, so I don't really know. But according to the map, it's in the mountains. I'm pretty sure it was at the base of Mount Asami. Hmm. Something doesn't feel right. You'd expect a riddle pointing the way to hidden gold to be a bit more exact. I get the feeling that even the part about Sogakishi was a mistake. Well, I think it could be Sogakishi. It could be talking about some house that grandfather lived in when he was a kid that we don't know about. After all, the first line mentioned his beloved hometown. Shen, you served grandfather alcohol and stuff lots of times, right? Hasn't he ever talked to you about this past? This past? The master almost never speaks of the past. However, he does. He talks of the great Kanto earthquake as though it was someone else's story. So he may have been living far away from the Kanto area. The Shiramai family may have been living in Odawara, but not all the branch families were. Grandfather often called himself part of the branch, or branch family. Huh, okay. The least connected to the successor. And that means the beloved hometown might not even be Odawara at all. I've never heard anything about Grandfather's hometown, and I doubt he actually was telling me if I asked. If the so-called Blog hometown isn't referring to the Jeremiah family's roots, then the Odawara theories are from the beginning. Of course, this doesn't completely remove the possibility that it was that it was so Kishi. For example, perhaps we he lived in Odawara when he was very young, but then moved far away later. I don't understand what you're all talking about. Maria had been completely left out of the conversation, and she now sat puffing out her cheeks in boredom. So basically, if we can't even agree on the starting point for this dice to gain gold, we're totally stuck. But wait, after the first five lines, the thing we end up finding is a key, right? Even if you don't have the key, it's always possible to bust through a door. Can't we just skip the first five lines and start figuring out the rest? Oh, I hadn't thought of that. Oh well, we're just wasting time anyway. Let's hear the rest of Battler's reasoning. But in the next part, it can start really fast. Shan Chan frowned slightly. After looking back at Maria's notebook to recall what was written there. Yeah, I was forced to agree. 
On the first twilight, offering six chosen by the key as sacrifices, it sure does get horrible quickly. On the second twilight, it says to tear apart two or close. Does that mean to take them and break off? Wait, does that mean to make them break off their loving relationship? Or does it mean to literally tear them apart? I don't know, but either way, it's pretty disgusting. Even if we set the second, wait, that second line aside, it mentions six people for the first twilight, then five people for the fourth through eighth twilights, so at least eleven people must be sacrificed. <sighs> They're sacrifices to revive, to revive Beatrice. Hmm. I see, sacrifices to restore the witch. Yeah, that's a good movie. Near the end, the witch will be revived on that tablet. That last word is guaranteed. On the ninth twilight, the witch shall revive, and none shall be left alive. So everyone will die in that. God darn it, I keep forgetting to change my voice. <laughs> and after that, the tenth twilight is the goal line. Not sure how you're supposed to reach the golden land of everyone's dead by then. Depending on, wait, depending on how you interpret it, the traveler who holds the key may or may not be included in the none shall be left alive part. But at the end, there's something pretty interesting. After reaching the goal, this is him, <laughs> the witch gives out four treasures. One shall be all the gold. The problem is the next one. It says the dead souls will be resurrected, right? Doesn't that sound like it means everyone who died in the earlier ones? If you put it like that, then the part about reviving lost love might refer to the pair torn apart on the second twilight. That's right, and the fourth one refers to the ninth twilight. The fourth treasure is putting the witch revived on the ninth twilight to sleep. If we put a happy spin on all of this, it would be hectic with people dying and breaking up all over the place. But it'll all be made right in the end. The waking witch will sleep again, and everything will be like it was at the start, except for the huge pile of gold. The witch must be pretty busy, what with all the killing, reviving, breaking up, and reuniting people. Not to mention walking up and sleeping. Sheesh, <laughs> uh, just when the tale of the hidden gold was getting interesting, it all gets pretty dubious once the witch starts showing up. Too true. <laughs> I laughed along with Jessica. After all, the idea of a wish was just too ridiculous, so I think the voices of those are reversed. <laughs> well, we all, it's hard to tell. Of course, once we started laughing like that, Maria, who believed in the witch, got angry. <sighs> the witch is incredible! She can do anything with her. He can kill. He can bring back to life. He can give one. He can take it. She can fly in the sky, can become invisible, can even make gold and bread out of nothing. <laughs> Dang, my bad. We were just joking. Jessica apologized, sticking out her tongue, but Maria didn't accept it. She grabbed her notebook back out of my hands and opening to some of her pages tried to prove that the witch existed. Those pages have colorful drawings of witch on them. Wait, <laughs> those pages have colorful drawings of witches on them. And well conveyed the fantastical image Maria had of witches. It wasn't an old sister image of a crooked nose hag flying around in a room, but a dreamlike person with unnatural powers who could do anything and wore such a wait, wore a beautiful dress. It was just what you'd expect from an imaginative young girl. 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 <laughs> girl. <laughs> What's a girl? Fitting <laughs> through the sky, crossing a rainbow. Dancing around all night with a teacup and a teapot that would never get empty no matter how much you poured out of it. With the flourish of her staff, the stars in the sky would become candy and pour down, and flowers that produced sweets would bud at by the roadside. To Maria, witches were the only one with one concept that could embody the magical dream that so captivated her. As she grew older, it was the last remaining thing that could give richness for a doll and point everyday life. That's why Maria believed in witches. She didn't want that dream of hers to be tarnished. That's why she didn't want anyone to tarnish the epitaph which referred the existence of witches. Because the witch named Beatrice is Maria's dream. To Maria's dream, the epitaph isn't a guide to the hidden gold, but magic to revive the witch. So it was the single link between Maria and the witch. 
Maria was very angry and walked into the room. Jessica and I scratched our heads and apologized. It might not be possible to smooth things over again, but at the time, like the time she got mad in front of the portrait, Maria didn't seem to be easily consoled. Unlike Jessica and I, who hung our heads wondering what to do, wondering what to do, Shannon chanted him with a little bit of Um, Maria, son, did you know? There's a ghost story about Beatrice that has been passed down amongst the servants. Who? Oh, yeah, that's right. Shannon, tell us about it. I don't really know, but it's apparently pretty famous among the servants. What is this? A ghost story? Yes. It seems it's a story from before we were born. Also heard about it from my mother. Oh, I also heard about it from my mother. <laughs> yes. It has been passed down since the time of the mansion's construction. The servants of that time whispered that the mansion had two masters, one of the day and one of the night. The tale that Shannon told was just like a typical campfire ghost story. If there was a forest with a witch living inside it, then of course the witch would come pay the mansion a visit from time to time. At some point, this ghost story naturally sprouted up between the servants. When people do their rounds a second time to check doors, windows, and locks that were supposedly closed, they find some of them left open. Lights that were supposed to be left off when were turned on, and lights that were supposed to be wet on went out. Uh, man. Uh, things left lying around would disappear, and things would appear when no one had any memory of putting them there. When any of these things happened, the old servants would say that the witch had visited the mansion, and this was playing tricks. <laughs> Maria, what is See, she exists! Beatrice exists! Yeah, she exists. Long ago, it was always right before leaving for school that I wasn't able to find my bag and stuff. Maria clapped on her chest with an ooh, ooh, as though this was final proof of the witch's existence. I opened my mouth and Maria would probably be, wait, if I opened my mouth, Maria would probably be hurt again, so I didn't. I mean, you hear this kind of story everywhere. Depending on the place, they might blame out a door for a hill. The only difference is that they call it a witch on this island. Of course, walking around a vast elegant mansion at night would be a little unsettling. It's an island devoid of people. Since the mansion is so drafty, walking around on a night with a thunderstorm is certainly be eerie. In addition, some servants have also seen Will of the Wisps and glittering butterflies dancing around. Huh. The Canonicoon also saw something like that when he patrolled on him. When he went from that, he's Recently, you often hear servants talking about strange footsteps inside the mansion near midnight. <sighs> we whispered together that the Beatrice Sam and the Portrait Sama. Uh, we whispered together that the Beatrice Sama and the Portrait sometimes makes herself invisible and walks through the mansion. It happened a while ago, but even I have heard footsteps while patrolling at night that resemble those stories. Woo, that's scary. Ah, but there's some, there's nothing to be afraid of. Beatrice Sama is another ruler of this mansion, separate from the masters. So there's no need to be naturally afraid. If you respect her, I hear she won't do anything bad. However, she can be quite terrifying if you don't respect her, right? Correct. I've heard that just before I began working here. Someone who spoke badly about Beatrice Sama felt Sama. Beatrice Sama fell down the stairs and quit after receiving a large injury or anything. To be right. I don't want to say Sama that looks like that. <laughs> oh, I think it's actually Sama. Oh. Because of that, there was a rumor between the servants that Beatrice Sama's anger had been brought down upon this person. Oh, anger will definitely be brought down in battle or in Jessica. Oh. Hey, I, I'm sorry. I don't want her anger brought down upon me. I apologize, Maria. Of course, I also apologize to the witch. I'm sorry, Beatrice Sama. Please forgive an outsider's nonsense. I'll apologize as well. I'm sorry, Beatrice Sama. Will the witch be able to forgive us now? <sighs> don't know. 
witches are fickle, so they forget when they want to, and don't when they don't. <sighs> Maria, you are what? Eight years old? You know a word like fickle? Ah. Whoa. That's no good. Maria Chan, isn't there some kind of good luck term that could prevent bad work and Jessica Chan from suffering against her stamina's wrath? Okay, whatever, whatever it actually is, she's a kid. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> Maybe something that can block against magic. By relying on Maria, who was proud of knowing the most about witches, George was trying to revive her self esteem. Once again, I've got Meyer's ability to calm this down. After taking a moment to cross her arms and seriously ponder whether there might be a charm that could save us, she started flipping out, flipping through the pages in her notebook. I thought it was just a scribble diary, but there also seemed to be quite a few pages that looked like they'd come from a book on black magic. Maria solemnly considered to prove these pages, which contained things that looked like magic circles. Apparently, Grandfather was the only one with a black magic hobby. When Maria finally found what she was looking for, she snapped the notebook shut and threw it into her handbag. She then began fishing through that bag of contents. There seemed to be various jumbled up things in there. After a while, she took out various pieces of junk, although they were probably important magical items to her. And her feet were through the back and saying that they were wrong. It was all a little humorous, just like when Dora, oh what the, I don't know how to pronounce that, Doraemon, took out the long tool. Finally, she seemed to discover what she was looking for. With a face that was an imaginable fatigue when compared to intense for death. expression she had worn until now, she held those out to Jessica and me. Those. I grabbed it and saw that it was a very cheap looking charm. It looked like a bracelet made from a plastic grocery with a scorpion team metal attached. Haven't you ever seen those cheap Zodiac themed accessories? That kind you might win in a crane game at an arcade. It really looked like something like that. There were two of them. Probably one for me and one for Jessica. However, the very fact that there were two of them made them feel even more like cheap manufactured goods, making it pretty hard to think of them as magical items. You're giving these to me, Bower? With these charms, you don't even need to worry about me, just <laughs> Because scorpions have the power of word on magic! Huh. Huh, bro? Didn't know scorpions could do that. Uh, power doesn't believe! Uh, uh, uh. Well, I said too much in anger in Maria again. Maria took out her notebook again, pointing out how various pages by pointing out various pages as she went on and on about how the scorpion has such an incredible holy power that it had been used in magic probably magical circles since ancient times. Uh, I've heard about that from some of the other young students. Something about how the scorpion is drawn as a magic compelling symbol and sorcery. Huh, really? <sighs> the scorpion protects against bad magic, bad magic and calamity. The animal brings peace to the heart. Therefore, its effects are temporal. Oh. It's true. Uh, the scorpion wraps around the emerald and protects it. Yes, that certainly does sound like it would work well. I really want to make fun of those worthless looking charms and try and find a good stopping point. And as I watched Maria explaining with all of her heart and explain that she found them for all for our sakes, I started to feel like it might actually work even if it was just a prize from some game center. The material quality of the term didn't matter. What mattered was the strength of her feelings. Even I don't think of myself as a sort of loser who laughed at something like that. Okay, thank you. I apologize to Beatrice and Sama. Gosh darn it, if I could. Okay, thank you. I apologize to Beatrice and Sama. But even if I do end up getting cursed, it'll be safe now thanks to Maria's charm. Right, Jessica? Yeah, that's right. Thanks, Maria. Burn on your arm when you want to. Burn on your arm when you want your heart to be at peace. Putting your wall on your money won't decrease. If you hang it on from a, if you hang it from a door knob, bad things can't get in. It's a really convenient charm. That's a lot of words for a kid. What an incredible effect. If Maria Sama gives their confidence seal of approval, then it surely must be reliable. Shannon Chan clapped her hands together and Maria stuck out her chest. 
She was totally in a good mood again. It's probably best if we let her lead the conversation a bit longer, if it'll keep her in such a good mood. Come to think of it, she looked a bit bored when we were getting excited about the hidden gold, probably because she couldn't keep up. While eating the cookies, Kumasawa was kind of big, Jessica and I asked Maria this and that about black magic. Maria happily chatted away in response to our questions. Each time, George and Niki and Shannon Chan would act surprised or chime in. The clouds in the sky grew darker and darker, but we, cousins, really enjoyed communicating freely after a year of separation. That's sweet. I did I just feel a drop on my forehead? Huh? I wonder. As George and Niki rubbed his forehead, he looked up at the sky. Considering the color of the sky and the dampness of the air, it wouldn't have been odd for a raindrop to hit him. The wind also seemed to have grown a bit stronger. What? I didn't feel a drop. Oh, yeah, I did. Oh. Don't worry, neither did I. Anyway, I'm sure it'll rain so much tonight that everyone will get to feel plenty of raindrops. And eh, raindrops. That's right. Maybe we should head back soon. Shannon Chant looked down at her watch. It was probably well into the evening by now. Is it already time for you to return to your work? Yes. Thank you very much for allowing me to enjoy some time together with you all. Tell Kumasawa san thanks for the cookies. Okay, everyone, help out with the cleanup. Shan Chan declined our help, saying that this was a servant's job. Shan Chan declined our help, saying that this was a servant's job. I'm picking up drop forks before the waitress, too. Has to, it's pretty much my purpose in life. We folded up the blanket, gathered up the trash, and helped clean everything up. Ah, the trash is getting away! Ah, ah. I won't let it escape. I'll grab it before Maria does. Ah, I'll grab it! Ah, ah, ah. Maria, <laughs> don't get your shoes wet. You'll get in trouble. Uh, so many moves. To Maria, chasing after some trash sent flying by the powerful winds was just another game. By the time we finished, the wind was blowing up pretty strongly. Probably a good time to head back. You've all helped me out a lot. Thank you very much. It looks like you're really out of time. It's okay if you head back first. George and Miki perceived from her hurried appearance that very little of her free time was left. Tanji sounds very strict about time. If you don't show up where you're supposed to be at the right time, I bet he'll be fit. Ooh. We'll see you later. Do your best with your work. Yes. Then, if you will excuse me. After making a respectful bow, Shannon Chan ran towards the Rose Garden. Okay, let's head back to the guest house. We can watch TV or something and relax a little. Ah, wanna watch TV? Wanna watch TV? Ah. Then it's decided. Let's all head back and watch TV together. Maria, who wasn't done having fun, agreed once television was mentioned. We climbed up the gentle stairs and returned to the rose garden. Yeah, you did. Yeah, that's your stopping point. Ah. Bye-bye.